This is George Gilbert. We're on the ground at Spark Summit. We're interviewing Sanjay Krishnamurti, who's Senior VP and CTO at Informatica. Um, so, Sanjay, uh, Informatica is in a unique position having most of the mainstream enterprises handle, your, handle their uh, data transformation, data preparation um, workflows. Uh, with respect to Spark, and other processing capabilities. How are you using those to bring the enterprise from um, the old um, operational database to data warehouse to now where we have greater volumes, great num or greater number of data targets? Um, what's the strategy? So Informatica has always provided a set of tooling which appeals to higher level uh, provides a higher level of abstraction so the developers can develop their data pipelines in a graphical way and then deploy it to whatever runtime platform they have. In the past, they have deployed it on on, uh, uh, on uh, database itself and they used ELT. They used R engine to do the, do the data transformation and data movement. And we also allow them to push that down to Hadoop or take that and deploy it to a cloud. So given that what we call WIPE, that data flow engine that can be morphed to run anywhere, we have the capability of taking the jobs that they already built out and then leverage that in a big data ecosystem. So one of the popular topics, uh, at least with, with Hadoop, in terms of getting across the, the chasm, um, sort of beyond the data lake, is data warehouse offload. Mm -hmm. is your, does your architecture lend itself to taking what would have been a lot of transformation heavy workload that is on executing on the data warehouse, moving that back to Hadoop? Yes, actually we have customers who are already doing that. They go through their data warehouse spend today and realize that maybe there's a lot of data that's really for staging purposes and they don't really need a data warehouse for that. And it would be much more cost beneficial if they were to move that to Hadoop. And now, if, uh, since they used Informatica for their mapping, they can take that mapping, repurpose that, so rather than writing directly to a database, they write to Hadoop. And a lot of the pre-processing happens in the Hadoop cluster. Once they pre-process the data, then they can move it to, uh, to a warehouse of their choice. So we already have customers doing that, and they can do that data warehouse optimization using our tools. So our architecture lends very well to that kind of uh, pattern. Okay, because that's, as we understand it, that's the sort of most common application for taking Hadoop into an economic sort of role where it's not just kicking the tires. Now, you've done some work with future-proofing the architecture so that the um, data preparation and transformation logic that's done in your graphical environment can actually run on many different uh, underlying engines. Tell us about that. Um, so, once you define your, your data processing logic using our domain-specific language, using the visual tool, what we call a mapping, we now take that mapping and we can either translate that into a high query. So if you're using, you know, that was before Spark came along. So you can translate that into high query. So essentially now using Hive infrastructure to do the processing. Now Hive was very batch oriented and wasn't the most performant, but gave you the best throughput. We can take that same logic that you've written and translate that into, uh, we can take the same logic and translate that into uh, Spark SQL or Spark. And now all of a sudden, without making any changes to your development artifacts, now you're running on Spark. So that way you're future proofed. Today is Spark, tomorrow it may be something else, maybe not, but and you are protected from whatever that underlying infrastructure is. So not only do you leverage what you already done, you also leverage your skill set so you don't need to learn something new. Now, um, we see more pipelines, we see more pipelines having the uh, characteristic of being near real time. Um, not as a replacement to what was done with staging to Hadoop or, or the data warehouse, but to feed the interactive analytics. Right. How does it, uh, Informa Informatica address those needs? Informatica has provided real-time capabilities in the past also. So in our products today, you can feed, take messages off message queue, do any kinds of transformations, and maybe publish it to another message queue. We already have that capability. Or you can take changes that are happening in a database in real time, uh, do something and publish that as an event somewhere in a different event bus. We have that capability. We want to be able to take the same capability and map that to Spark real time. So once you have that, you can leverage Spark's real-time capabilities, but again, you use the same business logic that you've been using all along. It's very similar to what we've done with Pushdown to Hadoop. 
same capabilities except now it's available to you in real time. So would it, would it be fair to say there'll be the, the traditional, what was batch that's future-proofed mm -hmm. and now there's the real time that will be essentially future-proofed as well for multiple deployment targets. Exactly. That's, that's, our architecture has always enabled that. And now, in, um, prior to Spark, there was no real-time capability in, in Hadoop environment. Spark streaming provides us that. So now you can take your real-time workloads as well and push it down to Hadoop. OK, great. So this is George Gilbert on the ground, Spark Summit. Uh, we'll be back shortly with our next guest.